The internal carotid artery arises from the common carotid artery, where this bifurcates into the internal and external carotid arteries at cervical vertebral level 3 or 4. The internal carotid artery terminates in the skull by dividing into middle cerebral and anterior cerebral arteries. Clinically, the classification system of the internal carotid artery describes seven anatomical segments, each with a corresponding alphanumeric identifier, from C1 to C7. The segments of the internal carotid artery are as follows. C1 segment, also called the cervical segment, extends from the carotid bifurcation until it enters the carotid canal in the skull. At its origin, the internal carotid artery is somewhat dilated. This part of the artery is known as the carotid sinus. Normally, there are no branches from the C1 segment of the internal carotid artery. The C2 segment, or the petro segment, is that which is inside the petros part of the temporal bone. This segment extends until the foramen lacerum. It has two branches, the carotico-tympanic artery and the vidian artery. The C3 segment is the lacerum segment. This is a short segment that begins above the foramen lacerum and ends at the petrolingual ligament. Keep in mind that the internal carotid artery does not pass through the foramen lacerum but above it, on its way to the cavernous sinus. The C3 segment has no branches. C4 segment, or the cavernous segment of the internal carotid artery, begins at the petrolingual ligament and extends to the proximal dural ring. As its name implies, the cavernous segment is surrounded by the cavernous sinus. The curve in the cavernal segment is called the carotid siphon. The branches of the cavernal segment are the meningohypophyseal artery and the inferolateral trunk. The meningohypophyseal artery gives off the inferior hypophyseal artery, dorsal meningeal artery, and the tentorial artery, also called Bernasconi Cassinari artery or the Italian artery. The inferolateral trunk gives off numerous slender branches to the foramens located nearby the cavernous sinus. For example, branch to the superior orbital fissure, branch to foramen lacerum, or branch to foramen rotundum. The next segment of the internal carotid artery is the C5 segment, or the clinoid segment. It is another short segment of the internal carotid artery that begins after the artery exits the cavernal sinus at the proximal dural ring and extends distally to the distal dural ring, after which the carotid artery is considered intradural and has entered the subarachnoid space. The clinoid segment normally has no branches. C6 segment, or the ophthalmic segment, extends from the distal dural ring to the origin of the posterior communicating artery. The branches of the ophthalmic segment are the ophthalmic artery and the superior hypophyseal artery. The last segment of the internal carotid artery is C7, or the communicating segment. This segment extends from the origin of the posterior communicating artery to the bifurcation of the internal carotid artery. The posterior communicating artery is considered a branch of the C7 segment. Another branch from the C7 segment is the anterior choroidal artery. The internal carotid artery can receive blood via an important collateral pathway supplying the brain, the cerebral arterial circle, which is more commonly known as the circle of Willis.